Hey, Lori. Yeah. I think I'm having an eye problem. Why is that? I can't see myself coming into work today. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I got one for you, too. All right, what's that? Why did the cross-eyed teacher quit her job? Why did she quit her job? She couldn't control her pupils. <laughs> Hello everybody. Hey everyone. It's Lori and Lori. And together we are Lori Squared. <laughs> oh, you did the, I didn't do the. Let's do it together. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> well, today's L&L &L Cool Tech Tools segment is going to be about the sounding board app. And um, Hitty Shia, actually, I'm going to give her the credit for um, learning about this app, finding this app, exploring it and um, just using it uh, with one of her lessons in February. And then as she began to use it, she started to just be really creative with it and use it in several ways, not just as a communication uh, board, but she also started using it um, with some of her CVI students and, um, and highlighting the salient features. This is a free app, so that's always good, right? We like free, I like free. Uh, and it is a switch accessible, so for all of those past episodes that you have all been watching so intently, you can figure out how to use the switch in conjunction with using this super cool app as well. Um, it does have pictures that are already customized that you can use if you're looking for something that you're doing with a student, but you can also create your own pictures and create your own picture boards as well, which we will walk you through in today's episode. So who uses this app? Uh, children with um, autism or children that have special needs. Uh, it's very versatile. Uh, a teacher or a parent can share it. Um, you can create your own boards. You can put your own voice on it. You can upload your own pictures. Um, or you can use the pictures that are already provided. It does not take long to teach yourself um, how to use it. Uh, it it's very user-friendly. And some apps that do the same thing um, cost up to like $19 or more um, to download. So the fact that it's by AbleNet and it's free, free is a great, for free. great resource. Come on, you're not supposed to be dancing. Okay. Free. Free. We like free. <laughs> We're cheap. We're teachers. We need free. <laughs> um, but in this segment, you're going to see Hitty is going to demonstrate the app. She's going to talk about it. She's going to show the various ways that she's used it. And then there's going to be um, a video segment of um, one of my children using it to develop a grocery list. And then there's just some pictures of another student um, using the application at a grocery store on a field trip. Perfect. Hope you enjoy this episode. Until next time. Later. So this is the sounding board app right here. It's free. It's an augmentative communication app, but it's really flexible. So I found some other ways to use it um, as well. And it's sounding board by AbleNet Technologies, I think. Um, it comes with a whole bunch of preloaded boards, um, and it's right here under this category that says preloaded boards. Um, you can also buy more boards if if you don't like what's on here and feel like you can find some other symbols that are already made. Um, I'll just give an example of what one of the preloaded boards looks like under shopping list. Pretty simple pictures, pretty clear, um, but maybe still too abstract or not recognizable for some of our students. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can make um, some boards that I've made and how to make a board, but just to give you an example of what this is like milk. Um, that's what it sounds like. So I'm going to go back up. Those are all the preloaded boards. And then it says user created boards. Um, and I have created some, and a parent has created some, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But one of the really cool things about this app is you can share boards between um, anybody else who has the AbleNet sounding board app, which is really nice. So I've tried a bunch of different boards, and um, none of them that I've tried actually were free. Like I paid $17 for another board, and it didn't, it didn't look as good as this one does. Because for this one, you can set a nice back, black background border all through the whole screen, which, which looks really nice. The photos that I took of the toys, I took um, you know, just on a black 
piece of cardboard, or the I think I actually took it on the felt board. Um, so you get a nice clear picture. And then this would be just for two choices um, for which toy to play with, or it could be a matching activity. Um, so then you have to, you take the picture, you upload the picture, and I'll show you how to do all that. Um, and then you record your voice, or it could be mom's voice, anybody's voice. Koosh ball. And it saves it. Blue slinky. And I think... Koosh ball. Yeah, you don't have to... Um, Koosh ball. Well, I touched it with my thumb. Blue slinky. So it didn't have to be a point or a tap. It could be a whole hand press, which is nice. I'm pretty sure it's switch compatible also. Um, okay, so you can do two choices. You can do a single image. I'll go to, you can do, you saw in the preloaded board, I think we had six or eight choices. Um, here's four. So again, either, um, you know, can you find the green frog? Green frog. Or matching, you know, a, a, the toy frog to the picture of the frog, just depending what you're looking at, look, uh, working on. Or which bath toy do you want? You know, do you want the, I want the yellow duck. Yellow duck. Okay, so I'll go back. So another thing you can do is you can link one board to another board. So you see this has a yellow border around it and it has a little arrow up here. That's because I created a link so that when the, when the elephant is touched. Elephant. It goes to another board that I had to set up before so that I could link them. So the elephant um, is just the single image. That's what I was trying to show. It fills the whole screen, um, which is nice. And um, because I just was because I just used a picture from my photo library, I was able to edit the the photo the picture in the photo library with the highlighted yellow, you know, for the salient features. An elephant is an animal with four legs, big ears, and a long trunk. So it's very customizable, and that's just really what I love about it. I can go back. Um, okay, so talking about sharing um, apps between people, well, the uh, one student, these are her lunch choices, um, and I was able to just share this board with her, um, with her mother, and then her mother shared boards with me. I'm so not here's sure. another um, activity um, that we we're doing, Nancy and I are doing uh, a lesson, and then Lori did participated in this too. So we've all worked on this lesson um, for making cupcakes. And I started to think about how flexible this app is. And I thought, ooh, I can make like a little sort of virtual shopping activity. Um, because his mom was trying to show him things on her phone for Amazon. And it was way too small. And it was frustrating. And he didn't, he didn't, you know, he didn't like it. So I thought, well, I can make these pictures bigger um, and use this, you know, just two clear, nice, sharp pictures. So, what did we start with? So we started with our cupcake flavors. And again, um, you see the little ye yellow arrow. So each of these are linked to another board. So we get the, f the flavors. Chocolate cake mix. And then it, I linked it to a shopping cart so we could pretend that we were putting it in the cart. Add it to cart. So, and then we have to go back. So we made that choice, and then we talk about what's the next choice that we're going to make. And I'm not going to go through all this, but... Next choice. You didn't get the idea. Okay, so now we talk about our, our, our flavors of our, of our frosting, and we pick one of the frostings. Chocolate frosting. And we add it to the cart. Add it to cart. Okay, and I go back. And then the next, and I'll stop here, but... Next choice. Now I'm just going to show you how you can edit a board. Um, the main thing that you want to do is you want to have your photos ready in your, um, you know, your photo library and your <clears throat> iPad. For me, um, taking the picture with the iPad um, or finding an image online and taking a screenshot are the two best ways that I have found to get pictures into your photo library. <clears throat> Um, 
so these were all screenshots from the digital book, the CVI Animals book. Um, these were photos that I took uh, for uh, making a snowman activity so we could do the sequence and choices of like which part to do next. Um, but I just took the, the photos with the, with the iPad because what is hard to do is to figure out how to download a picture from like your um, OneDrive or something like that. That I haven't figured that part out. So take a picture or, down, or uh, do a screenshot of a picture that you find in Safari or online or some Google image search or just take the picture with your iPad itself. So if I want to do a, a, a little communication sequence or something talking about the salient features of, um, of a bird, I would have taken the screenshot of, um, of the digital version of this book, um, and I'm going to walk through those steps sort of so you'll see what I mean. So once you have a screenshot or an image or a photo of anything in your photo library, you can press this little um, icon up here that has three lines with little circles on them. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but it's like your editing uh, option. I don't know what that symbol is supposed to mean. All right, so now I'm in my edit mode, and along the side here, there's the different functions that I can do to the picture. Um, one of the ones I use a lot when I'm doing this is the cropping tool. So it's the, um, it looks like a little box. Do you see it right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have to crop this picture, so, but I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. It puts a box around it and then you can adjust how big or how much to zoom in on the picture. I'm just gonna say I'm done. Okay, so the other editing tool that I use for the salient features that I have to find now Okay, it's, it's this under the ellipses, the dot, dot, dot. So if you, the function's not there, then you know how you often have additional features. So you press the little dot, dot, dot to see more. And then you pick, press the little toolbox um, for markup. Then you have uh, options along the, well, mine's on the bottom. I don't know if that's where it always is. But um, there's a little pen with a squiggly line, and I think you can add text, and you can do other things. But what, it, what we want to do is we want to um, do the pen. So it's selected, it's blue, and then you can change the color of the highlighting. And um, since the image is red, I'm going to go with yellow, and you know, we'll say that yellow is, the, is a good, is a good um, preferred color for highlighting salient features. So I say yellow. All right, now this is the hard part. And I also have to get off. <laughs> I have to get this off. Oh, I think I pressed that again. There we go. All right, so then you just, if you had a stylus, it would probably be really nice, and I'll just try to do it with my finger. So say I want to highlight the wings. So I'm just going to drag my finger along the wings. So our little bird has two wings. And he has a beak. Okay, somebody else might be more talented with it, but there you go. There's our bird with two wings and a beak. And then I just say done. Okay, so there's the picture. Done. All right, now that picture is in my photo, is in my camera roll. So here's this. So say I'm going to create a board with the, the bird and the salient features of the bird. Um, I have the book downloaded in my iBooks. It's on Bird because I have that already ready. But if you didn't, you would just find your, you know, swipe through to find Bird. Bird. Um, I don't want the word actually on there this time because I just want more visual simplicity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, well, I don't even have to do that. I'm going to take a screenshot of this because I want to put it in my camera roll. So for a screenshot, you press the home button and the power button at the same time. And you hear the little camera sound. Okay, now it's in my camera roll. So I go back to my photos. And here's the bird. Okay, now that's what the whole picture looks like. I don't want all this other business to be in my communication symbol, so I'm going to crop it to edit it. So, so it's the little uh, editing tool with the three lines and circles. And I press the crop um, function, which is a little square kind of. 
that puts a white border around the, around the picture and then I just drag the corner in so that I can get in tight so that I just have a black, oops, hello, a black background. Okay, so now I'm in tight around the bird and I have just a nice, it's just a black background. So I say done. Okay, and now that as an image is in my, um, fo in my photo tools, photo images library, <laughs> whatever. All right, so now I have a picture of my bird and I have the salient features of the bird. So those two images are in there. I did them out of order, but that's okay. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to the app. Sounding board. Okay, so to make a new board, we um, look over on the top right. It says add board. There's a little plus sign to add board. Um, it's, there's a little box here for board names, so I'm going to say, whoops, bird. Uh, I'm just going to say bird, I guess, for right now. All right, select an image for the board. Now, this isn't the image that the kid's going to see. It's just like your, your own image in the um, sort of the list of boards that you have. So the choices are pick from symbols library, pick from photo library, or take a new photo. So I could even just, you know, do it on the fly and take a picture of something if I had it right in front of me. But I'm going to do say pick from photo library. And then I get the, the pictures that it's, you know, moments, camera roll. I'm just going to say camera roll. And there's my picture right here. You can move it and scale it once it's in here if it's not a good spot. But I think it's fine how it is. So I'm going to say use that. Um, you could record a prompt here, although honestly I've tried that and I haven't actually gotten it to work yet, so that'll be something to figure out for another day. But it might be like um, if you had two choices or something, you could say, you know, which is the picture of the bird or something like that. We're not doing that right now, though. So let me just go to the next. So this is basically my um, label for the board and the picture that goes with the label. So then I'm going to say next. And we have a nice obvious thing to do here, add image. And I'm going to add the image, choose from photo library. Okay, so this is actually what the kid is going to see. Um, and so let's say we're asking them, I guess, you know, we'll see we're trying to, um, either they're exploring or we're asking them to find which one is the bird. So I'll put bird on as one of them, say so use. And then you have your choices to record a message <clears throat> or link to another board. Um, so I'm going to put record message. Bird. So what showed up there was uh, it said recording. And you could see like the time was ticking. I don't know if you could see that. It's really small. But um, it was sort of counting how long it was taking me to say it. And then I just pressed stop to stop that recording. Um, now it's in there. And if I want to hear what it sounds like, I press play recorded. Bird. And I probably wouldn't keep that because it was staticky, but for now we're just going to leave it that way. What to do? Ah. I need to press message name. I need to give this little thing a mes message, which is just the label, bird. All right, and now that is bright white. It's not grayed out. I can actually do it. So that's, there we go. All right, now I can add my other image. So add image. Add image up here, choose from your photo library, and we're going to compare a bird and just another animal. We'll say a lion. I'm going to go ahead and label it so I don't forget that one this time. Record. Lion. Stop. Can play it to check it. Lion. Okay, and then next. All right, so there I'm there. I could keep adding images, but I don't want to. So just to save it <clears throat> and move on, I go, I press my top right arrow again, like, you know, advancing on. All right, so now that board is in there. Um, 
probably up at the top. Yeah, there's my bird. Now I want my bird when when somebody presses it. Bird. I want it to go to talk about the salient features, so I can say, "Yes, you found the bird. The bird has." Or you know, we might do it the other. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm just demonstrating. So where's my bird? Oh, I need to add a new board. Okay, so I want to link bird to a new board. So I'm going to make add, and do another quick add board. This one I'm going to say is the bird salient features. Photo library, camera roll, I'm going to find the bird that I highlighted, so I use that. Uh, next, add image, I'm just going to choose that same picture again. And the reason you're doing it twice is because one is sort of the label of what shows up in the menu of boards and the other one is the actual symbol that would be seen. Uh, record message. <clears throat> I think that I thought that should be in there. No, no, no. I'm okay. A bird is an animal with two wings and a beak. A bird is an animal with two wings and a beak. Good enough. All right, and it's not an option. I forgot something again, so I have to do this again, bird. Uh, maybe I'll say two wings and a beak. Okay, save. All right, now I can move on. Okay, and I'm not gonna do another image here because all I'm doing is expanding on that bird. So I'm gonna go back. All right, now it's in here. It's in my user-created boards. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to my bird board. Here are my two choices, bird, lion. Um, whoops, let me go back. I, what I wanna do is edit my bird board so I can create a link. So I press edit, boards at the top. I choose the board that I wanna edit, which is the bird. Um, I don't want to change anything here, that's all fine. <clears throat> so I'm going to press next. And I want to create a link um, just on this bird. So I'm going to press my bird symbol. I get actions, I can edit, delete, or cancel. I'm going to edit. And I have, here are my choices. Um, I can, you know, re-record or whatever I want to do. But what I want to do is link the message to another board. So I press that. And then I find the board on here that I've already created that I want to link it to, and I want to create it to the salient features one that I did. All right now it says it's linked to the um, board's uh, bird salient features. So I go next. I'm not going to link the line. I'm just going to leave this for right now. All right, so now it's there. I'm still in edit mode, and I can tell because I have all the little red circles with like the delete um, icon symbol. So I'm going to press edit again to get out. Okay, now I don't, I'm not in edit mode anymore. Now we can go bird. Bird. And press it again. A bird is an animal with two wings and a beak. Yeah, and so what you could do is you could do it, you, I could have arranged it the other way, and then we could introduce bird as a bird with an animal with two wings and a salient beak, and I could link it instead to the, you know, which one is the bird. Um, but you get the idea. All right, so two um, two other really cool things about this app uh, that that you can do um, is you can edit the background color uh, background color of the of the board. So I told you how I liked it because it's the only one I found that lets you have just a nice uh, black background. At least that is something affordable and it's free. So that's even better. So I'm just going to show you how you would edit. I'll just show you what, you know, so again, the black background, it shows uh, these pictures were screenshots from images online, so they have a white border around them, um, but the background here is all black, and I'll just go back to one of these other ones. You can see I took, uh, it has a black background around the picture, so that's just a nice non-complex look, but if I want to change the background, I go to settings, 
and here are your color choices. So it's not a huge amount of choices for the background, but um, here's what, you know, maybe yellow is a better contrast or something. So I think I pressed yellow. Yep, yellow is selected. Go back. And now when we look at, just look at this. And so now we have, whoa, it's yellow, <laughs> a, bright, a bright background. Or you know maybe white is the is the better way to go because it's just going to be nice and simple. So I'll go back to that and show what that looks like. Um, so you can't change it per board. You just change it you know sort of per session for what who you're using the board with. Um, another really cool thing that I mentioned before that you can do with this is you can share between between people. And I'll just show you quickly how to do that. So if I want to share this. Um, animal, well, let's see, we'll just do these activities. Okay, so if I want to share these four choice activities um, with maybe a, a teacher or the OT person or speech or something like that, um, I go to my edit boards up at the top and find my board. And I'm I'm on the base, the first page, and on the bottom it says export board. Now, if you're right with somebody who has an iPad, you can choose AirDrop and actually use the iPad, the Apple AirDrop function. Um, you are supposed to be able to get the email option. A parent that I've worked with has the email option on her iPad, but when I've pressed it, I don't think mine has worked. Yeah. It's not configured, and I think that's because my iPad is too old. So email might not work for us, um, or it might, I don't know. It's not working on mine. But that's okay, because AirDrop gives you a whole bunch of options. Um, I'm not connected to Wi-Fi right now, so I don't think very much is going to happen, but at least here you can see what the choices are. You can choose import with OneDrive, or you can choose import with um, Google Drive. And the parent that I was working with had a Gmail address, um, so we were able to use um, import with Google Drive, and that worked. Lori and I shared a board, and since we all have our OneDrive files, we were able to do import with OneDrive. Here's the board. Um, does say upload to OneDrive. It's not going to do anything. What? <laughs> it's, why, why do I have that connection? I don't know what's going on. Um, and then I can put it in a folder. So it brought up a bunch of file choices, and I made a, a file on OneDrive that says Sounding Board Boards, and I click that. And um, then I say, select this location. Um, and so here's just an example of a board that a parent shared with me. And she was able, I think her iPad is newer, she was able to just email it to me. So she sent me, um, she sent me their family members and stuff, but I'm not going to show that one. I'll just show the toys. So these are the little girl's favorite toys at home. Um, and she created the board at home. Mom did. Took pictures. She took mom a black background and everything. And then she just emailed me the board. And um, I was able to download it. And so when I downloaded it, I just was in my email. And I clicked download. It said, what do you want to download with? And it showed me the little sounding board. Um, app icon and so I clicked that and then there it was right on my right in my menu of um, of, of boards to use and then hit your back button if next choice next choice Cupcake liners with hearts for Valentine's Day. Add it to cart. Do you remember what to do up at the top? There you go. Next choice. Gummy bears. Madison's making a frosting choice. Now she's selecting her cupcake liners. Madison's putting items in her cart. And she's checking her shopping list to make sure she has it all. Whoops, I forgot the sprinkles. <laughs>